So we can tell you this, that city officials are just as concerned about wind as they are water. And if the power grid is knocked out, <laughs> that makes this pumping system far more vulnerable. We should note that this system, this is uh, one of the larger pumping stations, or 22 throughout this city, that house 120 pumps. And this is the motor. It essentially helps to pump out a thousand cubic feet of water per second. This is what they call a corkscrew pump housed inside this volu. And the housing, uh, the casing over this and all of its components are truly a complex system. So I'm going to ask my friend Ronaldo Robertson, who he retired but came back to volunteer for this storm. You worked here 36 years. I would imagine you have seen everything. Yes. What have you seen when things go wrong? I've seen when we lose 25 cycle power, or when we have failure with a transformer or a vacuum pump, we're unable to prime these pumps, or lower them as some people say, but and pump the water to the discharge side. This is called a relay station. So essentially the water comes out of the culverts? Out of the city culvert streets into the canal. It, underneath this motor? Underneath this surface right And here. then this motor here. And then this motor turns the impeller. And the impeller discharges the water to station six. How much capacity can these pumps, these 120 pumps, actually handle? Um, one inch, the first hour and one half inch each hour out there. So if you have a significant rain event in a short period of time? There's a possibility of flooding in the city. So volume is key? Yes. Over time? Yes. So, and you've seen it all? Yes. <laughs> what is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario I've seen is Hurricane Katrina. Just too much to water too fast. In 2005. And I also was 10 years old in the night war with Hurricane Betsy. People still point to Betsy as one of the worst flooding events in the history of this city. Right. Um, during Betsy, I've seen the city, the, the lower night war, and St. Bernard Paris under flood waters. And we're talking like... The water over the roof of the houses. Yes. So there's something important that we should know, that this is a system that has been in place for uh, far more than 100 years. Some of these turbines, some of these motors, some of these pumps date back to Calvin Coolidge, or at mm. least the system in itself does. To so 1898, yes. 1898, as Mr. Robertson tells us. So what the mayor has told us is that in order to bring this system up to speed, because we're seeing more and more of these rain events, mm -hmm. these significant drenchings, we need investment. Yeah. And it's not just here, it's in Houston, it's in St. Louis, and all across the country. Yeah, Michelle, I know that um, the, the governor and the mayor talked about they're actually going to station like National Guard troops to watch to see if the pumps fail. But is there really anything they can do if that happens? And have they been able to do anything recently to reinforce the pumps in any way? So as we mentioned, August 5th was the point at which they saw a failure of some 19 pumps. Since August 5th, they have brought um, seven pumps mm -hmm. back up to speed, and they're continuously, continuously working, they tell us, 24-7 to get all of them up. Obviously, that's not going to happen before Hurricane Nate, hit, Nate hits, but certainly they expect it to happen by the end of hurricane season so that perhaps next year they'll be uh, better prepared. All right. Michelle Miller, thanks so much for that report from New Orleans.